and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another marker versus marker. I love doing it. You guys love watching it. So I figured let's do Arctics, which I just recently reviewed in a previous video. Go check it out if you're interested. And Copic. So my light is a little distracting. <sighs> Can't find a good placement. All right, it's an awkward placement, but hey, now you can see both. So I'm really curious as to how these two are going to compare to each other. I've already done a less expensive marker versus high-end expensive marker. That was with a Huhu versus Copic. So I figured I'd go ahead and try out this again with this less expensive marker versus Copic. Arctix, Arctix versus Copic. <laughs> Anyway, just quickly, right off the bat, let me open this. Both items you can find on Amazon. This is the 80 count of Arctix alcohol markers. They are, as of this video, $39.89. So that's roughly, for an 80 pack, about 50 cents per marker. And then we have Copic set. Is the Copic Chow, it's the 36 count uh, set of E colors. This is from what I could find. I mean, I could be wrong, but from what I could find on Amazon, this was the least expensive set. And even then I didn't even pay for these. My mother did for Christmas because even despite how cheap they were to buy, I, I let me just tell you, they were $95, which is a steal. They are $2.63 per marker since we are dealing with 36 colors at $95 and and of course $95 at the time of this video. So yeah, the Copic Chow is just slightly smaller, has slightly less ink than the Copic Sketch. Of course the barrel is different, but as far as everything else goes, it's still chisel tip, brush nib. So I figured I might as well ask for the Copic Chow since it's less expensive and pretty much the same product. So I drew this. By the way, most of my line art is digital. I enjoy doing it that way. I consider myself an artist that is both digital and traditional. I have no problem doing both. So basically I just go into my program Paint Tool Sci, which is an art program that I use to draw digitally in. And I use my Wacom tablet to glee make this. And then I size it the way that I need to. I put in my marker paper. This marker paper is the Express It blending card. You can find it on Amazon as well. I have links all in my uh, description for all of the supplies I use. They are affiliate links, by the way. So what we're working on today is this cute girl that I drew up who is going to be resembling a planet. And I'm not gonna reveal what planet it is just yet. I'm just going to color it and see if you guys can guess. I did a lot of color swatching here between Arctic and Copic, and I think I found a good, reasonable matchup going on over here for skin, hair, eyes, shirt, pants, etc., etc. So, with that said, Arctic will be on this side and Copic will be on this side. I did have to bust out two Copic Sketch markers. The 36 count didn't really have all the colors I needed to match up for the Arctic side, but no big deal. It's still mostly Copic Chow, and technically it's all Copic in general. So let's get started. I had one person recently saying that, you know, for somebody who does, like, who draws such straight lines, I'm real crap when it comes to staying in the lines when I color. And y'all, I had, like, a good 10 minute laugh at that because it's true. And I don't even know, I, I, I can't defend myself. I really can't. I re and I don't even know what to say as far as that goes other than true. So if you see me going outside of the line, it is what it is. Really don't know what to say. But I mentioned that because I'll be taking that into account as I color now and thinking to myself, stay within the lines, stay within the lines. You are not a child anymore. But the truth is, I am. I am.
So I'm not gonna lie, the Copic side was, it was hard to do, but it was still easier because I've got such a fine point when it comes to the brush nib. Let's try the chisel tip, or not the chisel tip. Let's try the chisel tip on the eye. No, that would not work. As much as I would probably want it to, it just, no. So I'm very curious as to how much harder this is gonna be because there's such fine detail as far as this star goes. I was genuinely nervous for the Arctic side, but it didn't come out that bad. I really like it. And of course, I'm gonna be going in with my Sakura white gel pen. It's the Jelly Roll by Sakura 08. One of the biggest differences though, and I have to admit it, is that there are benefits to the brush nib. Because with the brush nib, you are able to get a much better feathering, and that's just undeniable. Like, I'm not gonna be here telling you, oh, you can totally get a feathering with the bullet nib. You kinda can't. At least not in the way that I like to feather. You can get feathering strokes with a bullet nib, but not so fine as these lines. But in comparison to the chisel tip, I still think markers should have a chisel tip. I think they should have a chisel tip and a brush nib the way that the Copics do. If it were up to me, I would demand a marker be made with all three because there are pros and cons I feel to having all three. That's just my opinion. How would that work? I have no idea. Maybe I'll invent it one day. Who knows? It'd be like one of those like triangle things. Except that just sounds really awful because could you imagine holding a triangle to color with? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like those highlighters back in the day? I mean, I'm sure they still sell them. They're like the tri-tip where it's yellow on one side, blue on the other, and then pink on the other end. And it was really cool. Everyone had them. But one thing I'm really loving is how her eyes are coming out. And it definitely makes me want to try like other shapes, like hearts and I don't know, what else could you have eye shape in? I mean, stars, hearts, rainbows would be too hard. Huh? It's like I'm saying every other lucky charm I can think of. They're magically delicious. You'll find I use a lot of odds and ends on my desk that I use for straight edges just because. I have a ruler, but it's not always on me. So I just, you know, grab what I can. Uh, I went too far out. Dang it. Whale. Important decision making time. I could take my Sakura jelly roll and cover it up, but uh, it wouldn't be a real cover up because I don't know. Or I could just color it, whatever. I'm just gonna color it. I'm gonna color it out to there and it'll look weird, but I'm at the point where, <laughs> what is it that Bob Ross says? We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents, something to that effect. And this was my happy little accident. So I'm zooming in because the weirdest thing just happened while I was using the Arctics. I'm not sure if y'all, I don't, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but while I was coloring right here, the ink sprayed a little. I mean, it wasn't like a bleh, but it was like just a little tss. And so that's just a little disheartening to have a piece sort of be messed up like that. Granted, I've used these markers quite a bit now and I haven't had that happen once. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out. And now I'm gonna add some 
last minute touches. And that's that. So I am surprised at the two sides. Yes, there are differences, of course, as with any comparison that I've done before. Despite that one little freak accident, which I just don't know what to, I don't know what to think about. I've never had a marker do that before. Uh, I think it just might have been a fluke. Who knows? But overall, I really enjoyed doing this piece. She's definitely a planetary girl inspired by Saturn. I really enjoyed how she came out. I think she's super cute. I am in love with the stars in her eyes. And I hope you guys are too. So if you enjoyed this marker versus marker, maybe comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.